Nanotechnology, uh, as a general definition, is a creation of functional materials, particularly multifunctional materials, devices, and systems through control of matter on the nanoscale. When you come to the nanoscale, things look slightly different. In some cases, very different. This particular length scale in the nano uh, regime, less than 100 nanometers or so, the physical properties almost always undergo a change. So the conduction becomes different, mechanical behavior becomes different. When you have material that are in that small uh, scale uh, size regime, very different from the bulk properties. So that that just that makes you makes it very curious, and that also leads to some new kind of applications. I could look at nanotubes from two perspectives. One as a real extended version of the fullerene, uh, or macromolecular structure where you've taken a fullerene, cut it into two, you know, and just and just pull it uh, into a long cylinder. I can also think of it as a uh, as a as a nanoscale graphite. Uh, graphite is a material that has existed for a very long time. It's one of the most stable forms of carbon. And there have been lots of applications based on graphite, whether it's carbon fibers or graphite itself, uh, huge applications, you know, all the way from purification, uh, water purification industries to aerospace, uh, you know, composites. Uh, the carbon-based materials have been uh, in use for a very long time. And now, for the first time, you have a material that one could clearly say, here is a perfect graphite. You know, one of the problems with graphite is that uh, Graphitization, the process in which the carbon atoms are arranged in this hexagonal honeycomb lattice that makes graphite, is a very high temperature and time intensive phenomenon. So if you want to really make perfect graphite, you have to heat this thing at very high temperature for a very long time. And that is that consumes a lot of power. And it's also not very but because these structures are in the nano scale, one was able to create reasonably perfect structures without any defects, pretty much without any defects. Um, <clears throat> without going through this whole process of heat treatment. So, I think for the first time, you had a structure one could call here is a nice structure that is both a graph. Uh, normally, you know, if you basically reduce the size of a material, you can assume that it pretty much looks the same uh, up to a certain scale. But here, because this is a sheet-like material, and by folding to make a cylinder, you can make uh, uh, various um, variations of the same structure. Uh, and here you can see a, a structure of a tube where the hexagons are arranged like this, whereas here the hexagons are arranged in a different orientation. And what is fascinating about the structure is if the di diameter of this structure is small enough, then this small variation in how the hexagons are organized completely changes the electronic structure. Right? So for the first time, uh, people realize here is a structure where you take a simple sheet of graphite, fold it into a cylinder, and by small changes in the way you fold it, you have changed the electronic properties. Right? And I think a lot of attention that was given to carbon uh, nanotubes came out of this particular discovery that uh, once it is folded into a small cylinder, it's not graphite anymore. It can be very metallic or it can be semiconducting. So graphite, which is normally not considered as a, a semiconductor material, normally it's considered a dirt. You, know, you don't want the carbon to be around uh, when you're making a device suddenly became an interesting material for electronics. <laughs> a survey taken by NSF, uh, a conservative estimate of what these technologies, the market share for these technologies will be by 2010, and you're talking about uh, you know, several tens of billions, and in some cases, hundreds of billions of dollars. And it goes all, all over the place, you know, all the way from chemical engineering, to uh, aerospace and structural materials, to services, to manufacturing, uh, pharmaceuticals. So, you know, nanotechnology is not simply uh, specific to a particular area, but it really spans the whole spectrum of technologies. And that, that's again the reason why, um, you know, there has been so much investment, so much interest by uh, parties from all kinds of uh, uh, places. Uh, uh, you know what materials, how the materials can impact nanotechnology. They can at least list, um, you know, 10 or 15 uh, different areas which can easily uh, be impacted. Uh, structural materials, and again, uh, in particular in relation to carbon nanotubes, I can give some specific examples. Uh, but uh, from a materials point of view, uh, I can see that things are going on in structural materials, multifunctional structures, coatings, devices, sensors, 
actually there's membranes, you name it. Uh, I think uh, all these things have uh, interesting prospects by using nanotechnology and materials in nanotechnology. The real ultimate goal is ultimate control you know, from, the, from the atomic scale. How do you really control every atom or every molecule in a particular structure so that you can very clearly define the final properties of this material that you put or device that you put? But again, uh, the ultimate you know, goal of all this, whether it is a catalyst material, whether it is a device, you know, you want to really understand the role played by every atom. And that is the ultimate goal of this. And you know, we must have, for example, seen uh, the whole range of a whole spectrum of literature, all the way from Michael Python's prey to the real IBM kind of work, you know, where people talk about all kinds of things. Can you control this to that level? that uh, you can create nano machines, right? which ultimately you will be able to do all kinds of things, you know, as medical devices or whatever it is. Uh, or can you really create uh, uh, control at that scale so that you can really uh, tailor the movement of electrons to make a single electron device? So I, I think the spectrum is really broad.